What's up, Leron here. Today you're gonna learn how to paint this scene and you're gonna learn from my mistakes. Let's get started. Okay, so we'll get started with this uh, quick demo. Now, I noticed that a lot of you don't watch the pencil part, so I decided to do a very quick pencil sketch. I chose a reference for which the pencil sketch is really simple. And I also got this camera, uh, the other camera that uh, hopefully will entertain you. So I'm gonna start with the longest uh, ongoing line that I see at least here, and that is uh, this ridge in the background. And I'm just gonna draw it out real fast. We're gonna keep this drawing process very, very fast, okay? Not too many details, not too many things to fuss around with. Now, we have the actual ruins here. I'm just gonna draw the walls. So here we have that first wall and it goes up kind of like that. And then it moves towards us and we can see some front parts of these uh, bricks right here. Okay, and this is important to uh, indicate. We will use that later on. I'm gonna make this a little wider so that I can put in some figures, okay? Because we don't want this scene to be super boring and no figures. So this goes up somewhat like this. Than this wall. Now the most important part is actually the cast shadows from these walls. So we have a shadow coming through here on the ground and then there's a bump here and it connects like that to the bottom. We also have this cast shadow right around here. So this is it for the main area. Now we're gonna drop in a couple of other secondary ones. So as you can see in the reference one of them starts somewhere around here and then goes to the back. Then we have another one that's much farther uh, way that goes kind of like this and it actually connects all the way from the bottom to another one. Now I want to put in some figures because otherwise it's gonna be a bit sterile and boring, okay? So there's one here and this is the head and this is the body, some real simple and easy stuff. Then uh, two legs, maybe they have a backpack or something like that, that's one. Another figure right next to it, like so. Maybe a bit taller, just for interest, like this, and they do cast a shadow as well, so that's important. Uh, and I did plan on placing another figure that's far, a little closer to us, so let's place it somewhere around here. And then we can play around with the shadow painting around this figure's uh, shirt. Okay, so now we have three figures, and hopefully that makes uh, sense. Uh, maybe this one has a child with them or like a dog. You know what? Let's make a dog. Let's, like I always like to do uh, these kinds of uh, things. So maybe we'll add some interest. Uh, so this is it. This is all we need and we can now get started with painting. Okay, so painting strategy and it's really simple this time uh, because at least for the first wash it's very easy. All I want uh, is to indicate this top part with a little bit of blue and then I want to yellow it the more I come down and, and have a lot of warmth because it is a very sunny day. So I'm going to start with... Uh, a bit of uh, French ultramarine at the top. So I'm just picking up some paint here. And I'm gonna do the cliff and the ridge already uh, quite warm. The reason for that is that uh, it has a lot of warmth in it. Even the parts that are gonna be in the shadow later on will need some warmth, okay? So this is really important to put in there. Uh, the sky is fairly light, so I don't wanna make it too dark accidentally. So this is it for this part. Now uh, we come down to the the actual ridge of mountains. So I want to have this nice little um, a warmth that's almost orange, okay? Now it is important to have a bit of blue in that mixture just when we're getting started. The reason for that is not that it's green, but because it's in the back, so it's still quite muted, okay? I'm gonna go back and place some green on top, some uh, blue on top of that. Now the more we come down and get closer to uh, the foreground, I'm gonna start yellowing it up. So more yellows, like so, and also more reds. And this is gonna be a very easy wash. I'm just gonna cover everything up here, really nothing uh, too complex about it. And uh, notice how I'm trying to get a lot of interesting colors uh, on the very first wash and have that variety because it's very hard to get back that um, luminescent feel, I suppose. Um, it's hard to glaze a bright color over a dull color and still have it nice and bright. So, uh, and there aren't going to be too many white highlights here. Just I think I will put a bit of uh, yellow here, a bit more yellow on the actual structure. I'm working quite fast, but uh, and, and it may seem like I'm not that deliberate, but I am pretty much 
I pretty much know what I'm aiming at. So just to balance it out, a bit of um, coolness here. This guy is going to be in the shadow or girl. I don't know what it's going to be. So like so. And then I'm going to come back with, back with some uh, yellow for the ground. And then we established pretty much everything. The shadows, the... Uh, the, the the warm walls, the coolness of the sky and the ridge in the background. Uh, and this is pretty much it for the first wash, okay? And we're gonna let this uh, dry for a couple of moments, then we're gonna come back uh, with the second wash and start differentiating the shapes. So what I love about this scene is that it has a lot of clear shapes, so it'll be uh, easier to make that separation. So uh, let's allow this to dry and then come back and continue. Okay, so we're on to the next uh, layer now here. This is gonna be simple as well, and I'm gonna uh, walk you through everything I'm doing. First off, uh, this entire ridge should be dark, okay? So what we're gonna do is uh, darken it so that we have this nice little highlight around these walls, but it also should be quite neutralized, okay? I don't want it to be too bright, even though we put a lot of yellow in it before. Uh, now I wanna keep it quite dull, okay? Now it also has to be quite light. So I'm mixing two paints here, the French Ultramarine and the Peril in Red. Uh, and I'm just gonna go for it and we'll see what we get. So I think we need a bit stronger than what we have right now. Bit of a stronger value. And now, uh, if you notice, there are some highlights on that ridge that I will uh, include, okay? I didn't even draw them, but I think I'll be fine with following them. Um, but later on, I may need to dumb them down a little, okay? So just letting you know, uh, switch to a bit of a bluer mix here. We have one highlight coming through here around the left, but then it uh, gets muted down back like so. And this is all going to be a highlight under what I'm working on right now. And then here we have another one. So this area, in fact, the top area is going to be separate to the bottom area. Uh, now I think I still need to get it a bit darker. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put it in in one quick go, okay? All of this top ridge that maybe I'll lower a bit, like so, and you'll you'll soon see exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna put it in real quick, like this, not too much time to mess around with it, and then I'll put in the, the darker areas, wet and wet, that you see here that, that are uh, due to the different shifts in the direction of the of the rocks and the formations so you get this kind of a uh, touch of light and shadow now i'm doing it wet and wet because i don't want this to be too uh, sharp i don't want too sharp of a contrast um, or, or uh, too uh, sharp of a transition the reason for that is that it's quite in the background okay so what we're looking for here are smooth gradations but i do feel like i did end up getting a bit of a sharper change so and maybe because I used a bit too red but that's fine that's gonna read hopefully well uh, now what I'm gonna try and do perhaps hmm, should I connect it now no I'll probably leave it for a later stage now I'm gonna do uh, the lower part okay somewhere around here of the ridge and then the highlight we're gonna kill later on okay we're not gonna leave it like that don't worry uh, like so like this and we're pretty much done for now with the upper section, just a bit like that. So we're pretty much done. I can use a bit more neutral paint um, just to bring out again some of these rocks and formations, like so. And hopefully that makes them uh, pop a bit. Now it may seem a little dark, all of that, but don't worry. Uh, it's gonna be much lighter once it'll be put in the context of uh, the lower section, okay? So now we're done with this, we can move on to the walls that are closer. Now the name of the game here is really to connect as many areas as possible. Now I'm gonna start a little warmer from the get, okay? Because I want this part to be a little warmer, uh, especially the walls. So we're gonna use a lot of red and yellow, but I don't want them to feel too scorching and burning. So I will add just a bit of uh, blue here, like so, and we'll just get started. Uh, and now what you wanna watch out for is the, the shapes of the edges of the rocks. So all of these, you wanna make sure that you put in the right way, like this. We have a bit of a 
highlight here. And then all of that is in the shadowy parts. Now it has to be a little darker. So I'm going to make the current mix a little stronger here. Okay. Uh, worst case, we can come back with another wash and it, it may be the case that we'll need it. I'm still trying to figure that out. That part has to be much darker. You know what? Let's strengthen it much more. A lot of red, a lot of uh, blue because the yellow won't get us as far. Uh, so I think now we're closer to what we need. Now, the beautiful part is as I'm coming down towards the shadows, I will start to cool it uh, a little more. Okay, but first I want to exploit some uh, wet in wet here. So what I'm going to do is put in this corner of the wall. And all of this bottom part should be much darker. I need to get much more uh, paint on the brush. This part is a little darker as well. I'm going to put in some dark spots. Now here, again, towards the bottom, I'm going to start using some cooler shadows. Okay, because that's on the ground. That's the cast shadow. And it's much cooler. Like that. There's a bit of a corner there. Like so. This I'll have to close, this little gap. Now the cool part is that now we're connected to the people. Okay, so I'm gonna have to start working on the people as well. Um, I just, I think I wanna darken it a little more because it's all gonna fade. We're gonna come back especially with these sections. I know it looks like a big mess, but hopefully I'll be able to pull it off into something interesting. Now the bottom part has to be darker as well. So lots of French ultramarine. And the only trouble with French ultramarine is that it's sometimes it's hard to produce a very dark value with it. Uh, but I think we'll be fine here. So a lot of that. And put it back here. This part as well and hopefully that makes sense now I will probably already connect it to uh, this wall that's a little more at the back like so keep it a little cooler I um, mean it actually comes above this wall like so and I'm just gonna lift back some of that paint here like so and then we have that wall in the back. I'm gonna make that a little lighter as well. Much lighter, so kind of like that. And it connects here and goes back to this side. And it has this cast shadow. And now I think we're pretty much done with this section. Now I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush. Now we'll do uh, the, the, the people because they're already connected. So for this, I'm gonna just start with a very uh, strong red. And I think around the shirt, I'm going to yellow it up a bit. This is a combination. I don't know why I really started liking uh, recently. Now, sometimes I will sit down when I'm at this stage of the painting, but I don't know. I feel like standing up. Uh, so here we go. And now we'll connect the legs back to uh, the shadow that we just place here. Now we may have to go back and patch some things up, darken some things. I actually think I went a little too dark with the background, but that's fine. Um, and the other figure, I'm gonna do a little cooler. So, and this is, by the way, this is the most important wash really. This is the wash that establishes it all. The next parts are just uh, adding some um, final finish touches and details and not that important like this and maybe we'll have this figure wearing a bit more of a baggy pants so it's gonna be just a little thicker like so uh, and it also has to cast a gentle shadow to the right that I'm gonna cool with a bit of blue like this and now we're finished with the left section pretty much uh, there are a couple of details that you can add um, just to bring out the shape of the bricks so we have all these uh, small patterns like so. Let's make sure not to do them too uh, repetitive. That's the, the main uh, pitfall when doing uh, these kinds of things. But hopefully that uh, the message comes across and you can see that this is a brick wall. We will add some uh, of that later on in a 
kind of a, a brush stroke, dry brush strokes manner. Uh, next up we have the right section. Now the right section uh, is going to be a little more dull and boring. I don't know why, but it seems to me like a lot of the focus is going to go here. We're going to keep this one fairly cool, I think. And I'm actually going to just go for it and we'll see what we get. I'm, I'm going to start at the bottom this time. Got a negative paint around that uh, imaginary dog that you'll excuse me if it doesn't turn out exactly the way I want it because it is quite imaginary. It's not there. Like so. So this is going to be a little cooler. Now I'm going to warm it up with a bit of red here. I do feel like that's going to be necessary. And I will go over the bottom part of the figure like so. I'm just going to negative paint around the shirt and head. Uh, again, warming it up a bit. Let's move the palette a bit here. Like so. Now what's important is to leave this highlight that I just missed right now. So I'm going to dab that. And we get this nice little highlight here. Like so. And then uh, we do, we are able to see some of the wall behind. So something like this, but it is important to leave that highlight here because it exists and it looks good. So I want to keep that. And then we have this wall here at the back. Now we start getting this sense of a tunnel or wall or something like so. Um, now I'm pondering whether I should, let's see, we're, we're going to figure it out. Now there is this shadow under here uh, and I'm going to put the figure uh, in the shadow. So a bit of red, but this time I'm going to mute it down just a bit. Let's switch to a smaller brush. Taking some risks with uh, the larger brush, just because sometimes I'm lazy and I should probably switch. Um, so we have the head here. Now the shirt, I want to, I want to have it uh, white. So I'm going to keep it that way. And we have to think, I think we're going to kill off that highlight and this highlight. And um, what else? It still doesn't exactly look quite like what I want. So I'm trying to figure out, I think, you know what I'm going to do? I think I will cover it up with a very thin um, layer of kind of a bluish value. Kill that highlight off. But I will darken the area around it because it should be darker despite being uh, outside the focal point. I do want this part to be a little darker and hopefully you start to get um, the sense of location, the sense of where we are and what we're looking at. These are things that are always a challenge to convey. Um, let's see what we have here. I think this all should be in the shadow pretty much. Let's do it like that. Uh, darken the bottom a little more with blue. Warm the top a bit with orange, like so. Add later on another highlight for the person's uh, shoulder or something like that. Uh, but that's good enough for now. Now, um, I think the top part is dry enough that we can come back with a very light wash and just dumb down some of uh, some of those areas. They shouldn't be lighter than the foreground. This is why it doesn't read so well. So uh, I'm going to use some yellow and some red or pink and that's going to put everything in the right context. So here this area should be darker and I'm doing this very quickly uh, and this will make the highlights at the front pop a little more. Okay, so this is why this part is really important and then I'm going to connect it here because now these highlights actually mean something. Okay, before that they didn't, they didn't read as too significant of a value change. And now they will. And that'll make things look a little better. Okay. There's one thing I do want to uh, do that will bring this part more to the foreground. And that is darken and add all of these details of the, the different uh, cracks in the rocks and, and the, the bricks. All of that is what's what will pull this to the front. Okay. So I'm placing in these shapes of the bricks. Uh, this entire top section should be darker. So I'm just going to, you know what, I'm going to darken it up and then just add an, a hint or two of where the bricks are. Okay. Uh, I was right in judging the values of the background versus the foreground. Where I was wrong was just in, in figuring out that what I need was to darken this to bring it more forward. So 
here we have all of these small bricks and details. You can pretty much abstract most of them. You don't need to, to state them too clearly. You show one or two bricks and the rest are much uh, easier to read and, and everyone will figure out what they're looking at. That's the, the gist of it, really. I'm going to pass this line from top to bottom. And in fact, I want to make it a little darker. Now, as I mentioned, the trouble sometimes with uh, French Ultramarine is that it's a bit hard to darken. That's fine. That's just a part of it. And darken up this section without overworking it, so without putting in too many details, okay, that's really important to remember. You still want to keep it fresh, or as fresh as possible. Um, now, next to the bottom here, I'm going to really start to darken things up a little, okay. Um, so, let's see what we got. Okay, this looks good. Now, I'm going to switch to a larger brush, and I'm just going to... I'm gonna re-wet some of this area just to have the paint better flow. And then I'm gonna pick up a lot of this paint and just start darkening this section up. Because I did want to, to, to show a bit of a gradual change. So this will hopefully push it to the level of darkness uh, necessary, okay? Um, I'm thinking if I need some more details here. Probably not, this is probably close enough. Maybe just near the top. And this is uh, the, the easiest stage technically, because you have a lot of control, but it's the hardest stage in terms of you actually have to slow down and look at things very carefully and, and figure out what's missing, what the scene needs. Because anything that it doesn't need, uh, I don't recommend putting in. And with the, these figures, I really want to indicate that they're in the light, okay? So, so there is some, there is gonna be some shadows on them, so. So this part, probably here under the head, maybe I'll darken this person's shirt a bit, like so. Maybe they have their hand out like that. So I'll warm it up because the skin tone is a little warmer, kind of like this. Uh, now this part I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna darken it just a bit, not too much, not just, not like the right section. Uh, because again, I want to make sure that it's prominent enough, but not too much. So here we go. Just a bit of that darkness without indicating too many of the bricks or any of the, these kinds of details. Like this. This will give us an opportunity to bring out the dog, actually, that hopefully I will be able to paint. I'm not sure. Now I do need to tie... Uh, that person in with the shadow shape. So I will need some thick paint uh, to do that. And here's what I mean. Uh, I need to connect his at least his uh, legs with this stronger shadow to the right. Now here it goes like that. And this here is his hand reaching out for the, the dog's uh, thing. Now I may, I'm considering adding a jacket or something like that. Let's darken this area up like so, like this. So he has this kind of a puffer jacket or something like that, and hopefully that reads well. Uh, now we will add some, but not a lot of details to the background here. Um, a little bit muted, more muted in gray. I accidentally go to the phthalo blue all the time to get it. Um, let's see if they can see here, yeah. Okay, um, what else? So just a couple of details here and there. Uh, and there is a strong cast shadow that I didn't put earlier, so that's gonna be here. A bit of uh, darker shadows on the top of this wall, like that. Just some final details and touches, really. And I think with that, we're actually done with this one. I think it reads pretty well. You can tell what you're looking at. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, let me know your thoughts uh, in a comment down below and I will wrap up this video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this process. As you've seen, my main, I would say, self-criticism for this painting is that I should have reduced all of this background into just one even color, maybe something a little more gray, and that would have made the, the, the 
painting much clearer, okay, if that makes sense. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you still haven't. I have tons of other processes like this one. Let me know what you think of the additional camera. I just thought you'd have something more interesting to look at and alternate and stimulate you as you watch this process. Thank you so much, and I will see you again in another vid real soon.